Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make uh, some simple little press dies. Uh, I've got some pieces of uh, sheet metal here, four inches diameter, about 55 thousandths thick, and I want to form these into a uh, somewhat of a cup. Uh, got a project making some candle holders and the piece that we're going to form is this bottom that we make a cup out of. Uh, the purest blacksmith would say well simply heat that up put it on your uh, stump and form this out with ball peen hammer which is an absolutely valid way to do it but here at the tin barn I kind of like to mix the uh, uh, the machining, the fabrication, the blacksmith and the forging, mix all that together and so I like the way this one turned out but I need to make some more dies for it. What I'm going to use for the bottom is actually an old pulley. It's one that I found in literally in a trash pile. It's been bored out to uh, some nominal, non-nominal value and it had I think a long spindle shaft out here that's been uh, cut off. But the first thing we'll need to do is make a plug for that. This is concave in the middle. But what I'll need, once we put that piece of metal in there, I want something to push down on that. And I'm going to use another piece of scrap that I found that will set in there and on the 20 ton press we'll push it. This has got to be uh, machined down to size. First thing we need to do though is make a plug for this and the reason I want to do a plug for it, once I get it plugged I'm going to put a five millimeter hole through the center of it. I will do the same thing when I do these pieces. I'll simply exit off, put a five millimeter hole in it and then in this piece that we use to press down on will have a five millimeter screw or bolt sticking through it and that will align this in the center of this and align this in the center of our sheet metal. That way we'll, we'll push it in the center all the time. Got a piece of scrap here I'm going to use. This is all being made out of scrap by the way. Uh, going to use this to go in there uh, to this measures 1.124 this measures 1.13 I believe it is so basically all I've got to do is uh, sand it just a little bit in the lathe but then we want to face off the end of it uh, drill it for the five millimeter and also cut it off the length so let's turn to the lathe now and get started on this, what will be the center plug for the pulley. All right, I've got our piece that's going to be the, uh, the plug for the center of the uh, pulley. Got it mounted in the lathe. And we're going to face off this, uh, this end from a previous project. got it faced off now and I'm just going to take a piece of emery cloth and see if I can knock this exterior down again I, I said it needs to be 1.124 and we're about we're about 1.132 a little less than 10 thousandths I tell you what with that much I can probably just make a skim pass, knock some of this rust off. That's 1.125 there, 1.127, 1.125. 
Just going to tap just another little bit. Now I'm going to put just a little bit of a, a chamfer, chamfer on this end down here just as a lead end. Because we're wanting this to be a press fit. This needs to be 0.4 thick. Zero out the z-axis. There's 0.4. But you know what, before I do that, it would be much simpler to go ahead and drill it now. So I can leave that locked into place and just back it out of... Alright, that's 0.8 deep, about twice what we actually need. Alright, a piece went down in the drink somewhere. There it is. So I'm going to get this D-bird, that's kind of warm. I'm going to get this D-bird on the end, carry it over to the press, and press it in. I'll be right back. All right, I've got the centerpiece pressed into our pulley now, which is going to be the bottom part of our mold. The next thing we need to do is work on this piece, this die here, this, again, piece of scrap that's going to be the die that will set over that with the sheet metal sandwiched in between and press down. That piece needs to be 1.675 in diameter and three quarters of an inch thick. So to hold that, I'm going to use my little spider. Uh, this is, I know there's some commercial versions of this. Uh, this happens to be one of the most uh, useful items I've done here and uh, ever built here in the shop. And Actually, it's one of my highest viewed uh, videos as well. It's got the end that I'm putting up against the, uh, the spider already has a good faced surface. So we're going to put that in. The thickness of 0.75 is not real critical, but we're going to go ahead and face it off you know, reasonably close to that. For some reason, that's the very center of this piece seems to be extra hard, so We've got to have a five millimeter hole in it anyhow. We'll go ahead and do that. That'll make the turning or the facing a little easier as well. I see what the issue is here that it keeps binding up right here on this cinder. The problem is when I mounted my tool on here, I didn't seat it all the way to the bottom. So it's not on center. The reason I didn't, there was some swarf down there. Now 
Now, let's try that and see if that does any better. Oh, yes. Maybe one more pass. Kind of close quarters here, so I'm going to set my stop. I want to be a little past halfway here, but I definitely don't want to get in the jaws. I right, need about a hundred and thirty one thousands. All right, we were shooting for uh, one point six seven five, and that's just a close guess or a close one point six seven five thousands difference. Okay. Now, what I'm going to be using to line everything up are these 5 millimeter uh, screws. So I need a countersink in this, enough for that uh, head to go down in. Uh, remember, we're going, to be, uh, we're going to be drilling or pressing, I'm sorry. So probably just going to find the drill bit. That's this head is 0.387, so one step up from a 38, 2564. Let's try that. And that head will bear down in there fine. All right, going to do a, a little chamfer on that. Yeah, that's just a, being sure that wasn't a shoulder, that's just a ring left on there. Okay. All right, so there's our, our die, top die. We get turned over to the press, get the camera around on the press, and I'll show you how all this is going to work. Okay, before I move the camera over to the uh, press, I wanted to show you what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm taking my center square and my Randy Richard scribe. If you don't have one of these or any of Randy's, uh, uh, either of Randy's dovetail cutters, I encourage you to go over and check his channel. Randy is having a little fundraiser now to, uh, to do a shop edition or possibly even a new shop. I'm not sure which, uh, which he said. But uh, he's got a little fundraiser going, selling his uh, scribes and his dovetail cutter. So I encourage you to, to support Randy. But what we're going to do is take that scribe and, of course, the center square. You like to kind of get three places. And in this case, if you can see it, it came out, all three of them crossed at the exact same point. Uh, I'm not sure how these were cut out. I bought them cut out already. So I'm going to drill a 5 millimeter hole in this one, and then we'll go over to the press. I'm at the 20-ton uh, press now, and I've got the uh, 
the pulley, which is going to be the bottom part of our form. Line it up on there. Now, as I said, I drilled a 5 millimeter hole in that. And I'll explain in a minute why I'm using 5 millimeter when in the end there's going to be a quarter inch screw going through here. With a little block we just made, the five millimeter screw sandwich that in between. And now line all that up so that, that screw is going all the way through. Now just put that under the press. I'll let that bottom out. I'll just let that set there for a minute. This can be done hot, but as thin as this uh, sheet metal is, uh, it actually works just as well to do it cold. And there we have our foreign cup. Got a nice flat on the bottom where it was set on a uh, shelf, countertop, wherever the candle holder may be set. But let's go back over to the workbench and there's a couple more things we need, or need to do to this uh, to make it usable for the candle holder. For the candle holders to set flat on the uh, tabletop, wherever they're uh, used, we need an indention in the bottom. We've got the flat surface we made with our die, mold and die, but we need an indention in the center for the screw head. So I'm going to take this same piece die that we made over there, take the screw out, going to turn it over to the bottom side, put it here in the, in the mill, and I'm going to use a three quarter inch bit, or I'm sorry, a seven eighths bit, and put just a little countersink in there. And what that countersink will be is for this steel ball to push down in just enough to form this indention in here. So let's get this centered up. I'll just use that same five millimeter bit to, to do the centering on. That looks good enough. Let's slow this down. How do I know how deep to drill that? I really don't. This is going to be a, a trial and error, but that looks like it's cleared and maybe enough extra around there for the thickness of the uh, sheet metal. So we've done everything so far to keep all of our stuff aligned. We've got to keep this ball aligned. So the next part we need to do is look at drilling and tapping this ball for a five millimeter as well. 
so that when we get ready to to press that indention in the bottom down here, we can uh, we'll be able to hold it hold it straight like we have the other pieces. All right, now I'm going to give you a quick lesson on how to hold your balls. Uh, I found in doing this, the better grip you can get on your ball, the more successful you're going to be. And to get a good grip on it, I like to use a 5C collet with a collet stop. So I'm going to put the collet stop in. And then this is a one inch ball, one inch 5C collet. We'll take our collet holder. And with the, the ball in there, good and held good and tight or good and secure. All right, so there's how you hold your balls. Okay, according to my Starrett inch metric tap drill size, sizes and decimal equivalents, for an M5.8, it says a tap drill of 4.2 millimeters. I do not have a 4.2. I got a four and a four and a half. The decimal equivalent is 0.1654. But if we look over here on the decimal equivalent drill sizes, a 0.166, was, which is six tenths of a thousandth within size, says a number 19 bit. I've got a number 19, so that's what we're going to use for our uh, tap drill for the five millimeter. All right, I've got our uh, collet holder, our hexagon collet holder, mounted in the three jaw chuck. Remember, it's got our Ball good and held good and tight. These steel balls have got a relatively hard surface on them, but they're considerably softer once you break that surface. So we're going to take a center drill as usual and just try to break that hard surface. Okay, that didn't work too well. Ball stayed still. So what I'm going to do is put a facing tool on and see if I can't remove just a little bit of that case hardened surface. Just enough to get that drill bit started. All right, now let's see if that got enough of that hard surface off that we can break through. There it goes. Now we'll put our number 19 drill in. saying I'm dealing with some very hard stuff here we're gonna go just a little bit more with the countersink and hopefully that will get our drill bit into that softer core
we broke through that hard crust now. Hard outer surface. Let's set the DRO to zero. I'm going to go in about three quarters of an inch just so I got plenty of tap and room. Alright, not only has Pragmatic Lee showed you how to hold your balls, showed you how to drill a hole in them. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to tap it. But, I'm going to be honest with you. Through the magic of video, I'm going to be right back here in just a couple of seconds and tap this. But in reality, it's probably going to have to be the next day because I just realized I didn't have a 5 millimeter tap either. Got on Amazon and ordered one for next day delivery. So I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I got my 5 millimeter uh, 0.8 tap in. And I decided I'd move over here to the milling machine, uh, leaving the ball in the collet holder. Uh, a little easier to see over here on the milling machine. But I've got it in there, and I use the, uh, the same number 19 drill bit in the chuck just to line it up on center. So let's set our... Got the tap guide uh, in the chuck as well now to... Uh, to help keep it straight. And that's tapping really good. Kind of interesting this morning. Uh, I came out to the tin barn like I normally do. Brought a cup of coffee out with me. I've got my computer sitting back behind the camera on the desk over there. And usually use that time in the morning to get caught up on my videos. This morning there was a couple of new videos. Uh, one from Steve Summers on uh, taking down the wall in his, uh, in his shop. And then there was one from Mr. Pete, uh, part three of his uh, conversion of the left-handed drill press vise, uh, making reconditioning it, making it a uh, uh, right-handed vise. And for the handle on the vise, he was going to use a couple of, uh, I believe he said there were seven sixteenths balls. Uh, and he mentioned the fact that they were hard, uh, very hard to drill or case hardened. And what Mr. Pete did uh, was actually carried, uh, put these, set them on a fire brick, uh, heated them up uh, to red hot, basically tempered them, uh, let them cool on their own, and he was able to drill them then. Uh, for me, as you recall, what we did was just set this in the lathe and face off that hard surface on there and took the center and drill and further got through the hard surface. So now let's look and see. All right, I'm going to put some more Loctite on this. Let that set for a minute. Then we'll, we'll uh, I'll carry it over to the bandsaw and cut the head off. And then we'll meet back over at the press and actually uh, put our indention in the bottom of this for the screw head. Okay, as you recall, what we did to begin with was <clears throat> put our piece of metal in the pulley form with our die and, and use the press to make our cut. Now what we're going to do Set the pulley over to the side, take the screw piece out, or to take the screw out. We put this countersink uh, in our die. Now we'll take that ball 
and simply fit it in the hole to line everything up. Now, we have this indention. Let me get my quarter 20. And we have that flat. All right, I'm going to go back over to the workbench and we're going to do a quick recap on all this. Okay, so what we've accomplished in this video, uh, we made a plug for the center of our pulley that we're using as a mold put a five millimeter hole in it. I have put some paint on this since the last time you saw it while I was waiting for the tap to come in. Then we took this piece, made it uh, or uh, turned it to the diameter we wanted, put a five millimeter hole in it as well, put a uh, uh, countersink in it for the head of our five millimeter screws. Then we turned it over and I believe that was a seven eighths bit that we just got down to the uh, uh, to the uh, diameter of the bit. We held our ball, drilled and tapped a five millimeter hole in it, and from that we were able to press one of these flat pieces to make the cup to begin with, with this set up, then turn it over with the ball and for the, the ball was to give us an indention for the screw head. Now, this is going to get, this is not actually one of the candle holders right here. This is a candle snuffer, but it's drilled and tapped for quarter 20. And something similar for the candle holder uh, will be screwed on here. I told you earlier in the video that I will explain to you why I was using a five millimeter when I was going to be putting a quarter 20 screw through there. When we pressed with the ball, it literally stretched that hole right here to the size where a quarter 20, it's actually still, it's, it's a little bit big, but that's fine. That'll, that'll work fine for uh, getting this straightened up. What I found in some of the earlier ones where I started with all this with quarter inch hole to begin with, I had a plug in here with a quarter inch hole and I was drilling a quarter to start with. It stretched that hole uh, to the point almost where the head of the quarter 20 screw would go through. Let me see if I can find a sample piece right quick. Here's a piece I uh, punched with the or started drilled out with a quarter with a quarter inch hole. And again, it's almost it stretched it almost to the size of the uh, screw head. So I was going to use a 316th or either a number 12. And to my surprise and disappointment, the local Lowe's that we have here does not have a number 12 screw anywhere in the in the building, nor do they have a 316th. So I went five millimeter, which was, uh, I just in my head said maybe that stretch will be about right. And it does, it turned out well. Some of you may be thinking too, why would I go through all this trouble to make a candle holder, candle holder cup? Well, I don't have a candle holder cup to make. I got about, I think there's uh, 32 of them here. I'll probably, every one of them will get the initial press. Uh, some of them will be the stick candle holders and others of them will be used just uh, as for pillar candles. So if you stay tuned to the channel, uh, I don't get a lot of views on my forging videos, but I will be doing one uh, shortly to make the stick candle holders that will go on here and the finger rings and some of these as well for uh, 
tea candles and uh, and other small pillow style candles. So stay tuned. I appreciate your attention. Thank you for viewing. And we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.